Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers form the backbone of most modern naval fleets. As some of the largest and most powerful vessels in existence, they allow a country to project military power far beyond its shores without the need for local bases. The average Nimitz-class aircraft carrier in the U.S. Navy has up to 6,000 crew, commanders, and airmen on board. Functioning as what is essentially a floating airbase, the heart of the action on any carrier is the flight deck. And on the flight deck, everyone must be completely aware of their duties at all times. U.S. carriers use a color-coded system to avoid accidents and streamline operations. Specifically, flight deck crews wear different colored jackets and helmets to quickly identify their specific roles and responsibilities during flight operations. For instance, green is worn by catapults and arresting gear crews air wing maintenance personnel, cargo handling personnel, ground support equipment troubleshooters, and hook runners. This group is primarily involved in maintenance, launch, and recovery operations, meaning that it's their job to manage the takeoff and landing of various aircraft. Known as grapes because of their color, Purple jackets are reserved for aviation fuel handlers. These men and women are responsible for fueling and defueling aircraft. While they may sound straightforward enough, these are actually critical operations that require strict adherence to safety protocols and procedures. Indeed, there are lots of inherent risks in handling large quantities of aviation fuel in an environment with numerous potential ignition sources. So, grapes are not only easily recognized from their colors, but protective gear like gloves and goggles, which help protect against fuel splashes and vapors. Those flight deck crew members wearing red jackets are typically ordnance personnel. Though, crash and salvage crews and explosive ordnance disposal also wear crimson. These men and women's primary responsibilities revolve around the handling, transporting, and loading of various types of ordnance, including missiles, bombs, and ammunition onto aircraft. This process starts below deck, where all ordnance undergoes thorough safety checks and inspections to ensure it's in proper working condition and safe to handle. Once finished, the red jackets will handle transportation of the ordnance to the flight deck, loading, and arming. Oh, 
In the event of an incident, ordnance personnel are trained to respond quickly to help control and mitigate the situation, even disposing of ordnance when necessary. There are several other jacket colors in use on aircraft carrier flight decks. These include yellow jackets worn by aircraft handling officers, arresting gear officers, and plane directors. These personnel are mainly responsible for directing aircraft on the flight deck, including taxiing, takeoff, and landing operations. Blue, on the other hand, is worn by plane handlers and aircraft elevator operators. This group is involved in handling and moving aircraft on the flight and hangar decks. Landing signal officers and other higher ranking individuals typically wear white. As highly trained aviators themselves, LSOs provide real-time feedback to incoming pilots, often helping them to adjust their approach to ensure a safe landing. The average aircraft carrier flight deck is covered in billions of dollars of equipment all of which play a crucial role in helping the men, women, and aircraft on board do their respective jobs. The most important of all of this is most likely the Cato Bar system. Cato Bar stands for Catapult Assisted Takeoff, but Arrested Recovery. As the name implies, the system features a steam or hydraulic catapult system that launches each aircraft up to take speed in seconds, allowing them to use the much smaller carrier runways. The back end of the system features arrestor wires that catch each plane and absorb its kinetic energy, bringing it to a safe stop. In some newer vessels, the Cato bar is being replaced by EMALS, which stands for Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. This newer type of catapult uses electromagnetic technology to launch aircraft, allowing for smoother acceleration, reduced stress on the aircraft, and greater control and precision. Most aircraft carriers feature multiple runways and several catapults. This helps to maximize operational efficiency, flexibility, and safety by allowing for simultaneous launch and recovery operations. While one aircraft is being launched from a catapult on one runway, Another can be landing and caught by the arresting gear on another. However, the idea of utilizing multiple arresting wires involves redundancy.
since the wires are designed to be caught by the arresting hook of incoming aircraft. Having multiple wires increases the chance of a successful arrestment on the first attempt. As important as the flight deck itself is to the daily operation of an aircraft carrier, two other areas tend to have the most control over what does and doesn't happen on the vessel. The first is known as the island. This is a tower housing the bridge, the carrier air traffic control center, and primary flight control. Into a mobile home and road trip across, across the country. Aside from being the place where the ship's commanding officer and the navigation team operate, the island is the nerve center for both navigation and flight operations. Five zero three airborne. The second most important area on an aircraft carrier is the bubble. A glass area dug into the flight deck that houses the integrated catapult control station. From this vantage point, the catapult officer can closely oversee all flight deck operations. As they operate the actual catapult, these officers work very closely with the air boss, who is responsible for performing the final check of the aircraft and the deck conditions before launch. One of the many ways the U.S. Navy is entering the 21st century is through aircraft carrier flight deck simulators like this. This is the Flight Deck Crew Refresher Training Expansion Pack, or TEP. It utilizes virtual reality to immerse trainees in a realistic flight deck environment, allowing them to experience and react to various scenarios, including emergency situations, equipment failures, and complex aircraft recovery operations. As LSOs play a critical role in the safe operation of aircraft on carriers, the TEP aims to enhance trainee decision-making skills communication abilities, and situational awareness through targeted training modules. Those who have served on aircraft carriers are likely familiar with some of the many other duties crew members might be called upon to engage in. One of the most important of these is known as a FOD walk. FOD stands for Foreign Object Debris. This refers to any loose item that could potentially cause damage to aircraft or harm personnel if blown by a propeller or sucked into an aircraft engine intake. A FOD walk is typically conducted by crew members lining up and walking shoulder to shoulder across the flight deck meticulously inspecting the surface for foreign objects like rocks, tools, and bolts. This activity is generally performed at the beginning of the day and before flight operations. Still, the frequency can vary based on the operational tempo and specific circumstances on the deck. Another crucial safety and maintenance task is the flight deck scrub. 
scrubbing helps remove small debris that is too small to see with the naked eye, but could still potentially damage aircraft or endanger personnel. It also helps ensure aircraft, vehicles, and personnel get proper traction while moving around on the deck. Over time, the deck can also become slick with spilled fluids, wear, and environmental factors like sea spray and rain. Scrubbing the deck removes these contaminants, helping to maintain the necessary grip for aircraft and personnel moving on the deck. Finally, regular scrubbing helps to remove salt deposits and other corrosive materials from the flight deck prolonging its structural integrity and reducing the need for costly repairs and replacements. Even though the U.S. Navy prides itself on preventing accidents before they happen, all crew members must be prepared for any eventuality. That is why all flight deck crew members are required to participate in mass casualty drills. Such drills are critical for ensuring that medical teams, flight deck operators, damage control parties, and all other personnel can effectively coordinate and manage the response to a large-scale incident that may result in numerous injuries or fatalities. Unpleasant as it may seem, it's all in a day's work aboard an aircraft carrier. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.